Hello, everyone. This is Bill Griffin. Welcome to Different Take Podcast. If you like this content, please subscribe, like, share, comment. Really pre- appreciate everyone watching. New episodes Tuesdays and Thursdays. Today, I want to talk about a speech that Joe Biden did. Uh, this has been talked about by a lot of different people, but there's some something I'd like to say about it that I noticed um, that probably isn't prevalent. This was an attack on Joe Biden's political enemies, particularly the voters. So tens of millions of voters called MAGA Republicans. He is called them violent. He's called them extremist. He called them a clear and present danger. And he went on and on and on about how he loves the Constitution and they don't. I'd like for you to compare the clip that I'm going to play for you from Joe Biden to another president. And this is Ronald Reagan giving an address to the nation on the economy, February 5, 1981. He's specifically talking about this clip, uh, inflation. But itself, let me try to put this in personal terms. Here is a dollar such as you earned, spent, or saved in 1960. And here is a quarter, a dime, and a penny. 36 cents. That's what this 1960 dollar is worth today. And at the present world inflation rate, and our rate should continue three more years, that dollar of 1960 will be worth a quarter. So you can say Ronald Reagan's not angry. He doesn't, he comes across as very pleasant. And uh, he's talking about an important topic. This is a topic probably be great if Biden would talk about, uh, but he's not going to do that. Some have accused him of the speech in this clip, the idea that he's trying to create a diversion for the big topics of the day that affect people, such as inflation. True. MAGA Republicans do not respect the Constitution. They do not believe in the rule of law. They do not recognize the will of the people. They refuse to accept the results of a free election. And they're working right now, as I speak, in state after state, to give power to decide elections in America to partisans and cronies empowering election deniers to undermine democracy itself. So this is 24 minute long prime time, all the legacy network uh, television carried this. He talks about democracy quite a bit. I think this is deceptive because true democracy, you would vote on every issue rather than elect someone and entrust them with making legislation. The people would vote on each individual legislative proposal, and so you could potentially have hundreds of questions on a, on a ballot. You could bet more. You could vote more often. You could vote once a year, and the people just act as their own legislature. This sounds like utter madness. It's never worked. It has been tried, and in, in, to certain extents, many places around the world in history, it's not been successful. So we have a republic. He uses this to show that, well, I'm not, I'm, when I'm talking about democracy, I'm talking about elections. Well, are you now? Because we could, why don't you just say the word elections? And what is specifically, is he claiming that, uh, here, is he claiming that the MAGA Republicans are going to cheat on the next election? Are they going to, they're going to prevent, as he said, free and fair elections? They're going to undermine the integrity of elections. What is the specific concern and evidence? What is he accusing people of when it comes to elections? So some people, as I said, call this speech a diversion. In other words, I'll make a big splash of news attacking my uh, uh, opponents, positive for me, to cover up negative news about me. Well, what probably will happen is you're just throwing bad news on top of bad news. It's all bad. Nothing's uh, positive for the Biden administration when they 
do this. This is a really novel approach because um, Barack Obama really took a lot of negative publicity over some comments he made regarding a portion of electorate in Pennsylvania. You can look that up. Hillary Clinton, you remember the deplorables comments? She's still paying for that. Didn't do it again, I don't think. I was, or was much more disciplined about attacking the, the people that she's wanting to vote for her. I think with this speech is trying to accomplish, and I'm not sure Joe Biden would have gone along with this if he were all, well, if he was with us in terms of his cognitive ability. I'm not sure he would have lent his name to this, but the folks in the Biden administration that are, were pushing for this, I'm sure their name's not on the speech. So they, they can't be attacked for it. So Biden is sort of the take the hit, the publicity hit that uh, they don't have to take. The real purpose, I think, is to create doubt in case the Democrats do lose the House and or the Senate. They can blame Republicans because the Republicans didn't hold free and fair elections. I noticed during his speech, it's 24 minutes long, he doesn't mention anything about the secret ballot. Democrats used to, then Republicans used to talk about the sanctity of the secret ballot. In other words, you went into the voting booth, you did not talk about this before, you, no one knew who you voted for. Now, you can get a ballot in the mail, this is what Democrats have been pushing for, and that person can be observed by people in their family or friends or their um, church or whomever, if they agree to do this. You ask Democrats about this and say, well, there's no evidence to support this. Well, actually, there's plenty of evidence to support that this happens, and it's also just plain common sense that uh, if you're a willing participant, for example, you're an apathetic voter and you chose to sell your vote, you're not going to report the person you sold the vote to. So there will be some evidence of this in states, but by and large, this is a very difficult thing to be made known public and also to prosecute people for. You remember Stacey Abrams in Georgia, she claimed she won the election against Brian Kemp in 2018. But no evidence. So the same thing will happen. And the media will give him cover. They lose the election, they look for somebody to blame. Don't blame me, blame the MAGA Republicans. So I think that's what's going on here. It's pretty obvious. I think this only appeals to a very small portion of uh, Democrat voters. Although I will say there's such an intense and illogical contempt for Donald Trump that people don't really care whether the thing is true or not. And the media has pushed this, <laughs> this hatred of Trump for years and profited by it. And so the issues that are really important to everyone are getting played by stoking the hatred and fear of Donald Trump. And that's my uh, episode for today. And I really appreciate you watching. If you like this content, please subscribe, like, share, comment. Thank you.